me. The words um, we were talking about, the medical term, the ones you should write down are, um, we said enema, edema, enema. What else did I say, y'all? Uh, Wrong table. I got one. Okay. No, just the ones I just said. Enema, edema. Oh, it was cyanosis. Yes. Yeah. Cyanosis. So, but other medical terms, anything you feel like you can't use in a sentence. So, cyanosis could possibly lead to. And of course, the um, systems, write those down. We, we're not doing that because we're about to do a video for YouTube. You ain't about to throw everybody off. Uh -huh. So as when aging happens, older people tell us we're born to die. And as when you are born, you start to age. There's a reducing the functioning of the system. And also aging happens gradually. Aging happens naturally. And aging happens to everyone. It happens to everyone. That's what we're gonna do in this chapter. We're gonna learn about aging and how it makes us feel and how it affects each system, okay? So, you do have acute and chronic problems. We learned that acute means what? What does acute mean? Problem that begins rapidly and typically lasts 7 to 10 days. Yeah. Short term, like a cold. That's acute. Chronic is something that lasts a long period of time, like what? Um, cancer. Cancer. Yeah, cancer is chronic. Okay? Very good. Right, that's chronic. Now, cancer is malignant. Yeah. It's a growth of abnormal cells called a tumor. Cancer can grow locally, and it can grow rapidly. Sometimes it, it comes in like a thief in the night, and it invades one body system, or it can invade multiple body systems. You do have cancer warning signs, like a change in bowel or bladder habits, a sore throat that does not heal, unusual bleeding or a discharge from the body opening, a lump or a thickening in the breast in the breast or elsewhere, difficulty swallowing, um, an obvious change in a mole or a wart, and then nagging cough or hoarseness, okay? These are all cancer warning signs that you have to report to your provider if you go through this. Infections. Now, infections happen quite often to us. Like cancers, infections can spread one body, they, infections can affect one body system or it can affect multiple body systems. People respond differently. A localized infection is like um, a boil. We get those quite often in different places. That's a localized skin infection, okay? Now, a whole body infection is like pneumonia. Pneumonia affects the whole body. A silent response to an infection is like HIV. Because it comes in silently and it causes no symptoms. And if it's, if it weren't for lab tests, it would not be detected, okay? Because it's a silent infection. Now, the first system we're going to talk about is the integumentary system. And this system, when you, when you see that word, I want you to think skin, okay? Automatically, skin. Skin, I'm sorry. Had a moment. Now, two layers, three layers, actually. Dermis, epiderm epidermis, dermis, and then the subcutaneous tissue. Now, when it comes to the skin, that's the hair, the fingernails, the mucous membrane. As you get older, what happens to your skin? Let's talk about things that happen. Huh? Soggy. I mean, Did you say the skin gets soggy? Saggy. Ooh, loud. I said it too fast. Inability to retain moisture so yeah. you dry out yeah. then your skin starts to get what Thinny. thin and is it wrinkly? Like decreased elasticity that's what you were talking about sagging, sagging. Yeah. Yeah. shrinkage of the hypodermis decreased production of what what is the book melon oh, melanin. <laughs> melanin i can never say that right and also a decrease in the growth of hair follicles. Mm -hmm. What does your hair do to the skin? It protects. it protects it. Absolutely. Very, very, very good. So, abnormal signs and symptoms of the skin. Rashes, redness, cuts, 
flaky skin. Your skin gets flaky when it's dry. Cold, damp skin. These are abnormal signs and symptoms. Now, what should you report? Um, no. Oh. We talk, we're talking right now. Everything okay. I just mentioned, you should report it, okay? Uh, we should report it. Issues. If you come in and you see what, what should you report? If you see a rash, report it. What else? Open the skin, peel it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Anything that's abnormal with the patient before and after you left. Report it. Very good. Mm hmm. Now, the next system is the what? The endocrine. No. Next. Musculoskeletal system. That includes the bones, the muscles, the tendons. Ligaments and the joints. Ash. Now, what's the function of this system? To give the body its shape and the ability to move. Give the body its shape and the ability to move. As you get older, four things happen. You get what? Shorter. Short. Second thing, you lose. Weaker. From the bones. You get weaker. You get weak because you lose muscle mass. You lose minerals from your bones and you lose elasticity. Women, we often, we suffer the most from shrinkage. Men shrink too, but we, we shrink more than them. Chronic illnesses. What's a chronic illness of this system? Arthritis. Osteoarthritis. Arthritis. And osteoporosis. Arthritis is very common, okay? Let's keep going. Next system is the respiratory system. So what are the structures? Breathing. Yes. Bam. <laughs> Breathing. You have nasal pharynx, oral pharynx, bronchi, bronchioles, lungs take air in, move oxygen into the blood, and remove carbon dioxide from the blood. Breathing is the function. As you get older, your chest wall and lung structures become what? Rigid. Rigid, yeah. Your respiratory muscle strength decreases, mm -hmm. and the amount of air exchanged with each breath decreases also. So basically, as you get older, it's difficult to take a deep breath. Yeah. Right. After, that's when you get shorter breath. Take all your breath and take a deep breath. Abnormal signs and symptoms. What's the first word? Cyanosis. Cyanosis. <laughs> Gasping for breath. Being very cold or hot. Sweating. Common chronic illnesses, cold and the flu, and pneumonia. Okay? Foul smelling breath. breath. The next system is what system? Cellular system. Who? Wait, the circulatory system is a circulatory system. Circulatory system. So, in the circulatory system, it's the heart and the blood vessels working together. So, the heart has four chambers. Left and right atrium and the left and right ventricle. You're going to pump blood to the entire body, okay? Now, as you get older, what happens to the heart muscle wall? The heart muscle wall thickens, thickens become stiffer and may increase in size. Thickens, become stiffer and increase in size. The blood vessels become more rigid and stiff. So the sensors that regulate blood pressure does what? The position changes and they are less sensitive. And the heart rate decreases. decreases. So, when I started teaching this class, I thought it was very interesting. Like, when when you guys walk people, ambulate people, walk, ambulate with the gate belt. When they stand, the first thing you have to do is ask them, are you dizzy? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Because people go through something called orthostatic hypotension. And what that means is when you stand, your blood pressure drops, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what the circulatory system chart is telling you, the third one. When you stand, your blood pressure drops because the sensors that regulate blood pressure with position, over time, it gets worn out and it's less sensitive. So that's why... When older people stand, they get dizzy because just like the heart, it's a part of the body. And if you overwork it or through repetition, it kind of wears itself out. So the sensor that regulates blood pressure with position change, 
it wears itself out. So over time, older people, when they stand, that's why they get dizzy. Interesting enough, right? Mm -hmm. Stay at, um, um, nowhere around time. Walking. Which one? Huh? Walking. Ambulation? Ambulation. Now, abnormal signs and symptoms include swollen extremity, which is called edema, shortness of breath. Your feet may turn a pale color, weight loss or weight gain, um, cold, damp skin. All of these are abnormal signs and symptoms, okay? Common chronic illnesses are congestive heart failure and also peripheral vascular disease, okay, PVD. Next system is... Yeah, so the structures of this system, give me a few. To Mouth. The body with the and fluids and to remove food waste well, you gave me the function to oh, provide the, the structure. That's okay. okay. Provide the body with a supply of nutrients and fluid and to remove food waste products. The structures, when you think about digestive system, I want you to think about the mouth, the eating. stomach, eating, small intestine. Large intestine. Mm -hmm. As you get older, what happens in the digestive system? Food passes more slowly. Food passes slowly, and the amount and the effectiveness of the digestive juices are decreased. It's harder, and it takes constipation and decreasability to tolerate large meals, mm -hmm. it becomes a problem. So let's do this, ladies. I want y'all to pay attention, everybody. Because oftentimes, you do stuff without a, um, fully understanding how the body works. Mm -hmm. And I think if you, you made people understand what was going on, they would have a clear concept of what they need to do. So in long-term care, meals are scheduled. Breakfast is going to be out by at least... Seven. Let's say between seven and seven thirty, breakfast is coming out. Correct. Mm -hmm. So between breakfast and lunch, you know what comes out? A snack at nine a.m. So breakfast is at seven thirty, right? Mm -hmm. Snack comes out at what time? Nine a.m. So what time y'all think lunch coming out? Twelve. About eleven thirty. Lunch should be out by eleven. Between eleven thirty and twelve. Mm -hmm. So, 7.30, breakfast, 9 a.m., snack, 11, 11.30, lunch. So, after lunch, between 2, we're right at 2 o'clock. You know what's coming out again? Snack. Another snack. So, what time y'all think dinner's coming out? 4, 3.30, 4. No, about 5. I would say between 4.30, about 4.30. So, you get a snack at 2. Lunch coming out by 4, 4.30. And what's coming out again at 8? Another snack. So what happens at 7.30 a.m.? Breakfast. breakfast. What happens at 9? Snack. What happens at 11.30? Lunch. What happens at 2? Snack. What happens at 4.30? Dinner. What happens at 8? Snack. 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 So, as you get older, the book tells you your food does what? It slows down. It takes longer to digest because it takes longer because a constipation, peristalsis is slowing your food down, decreasability. They cannot tolerate large meals. The The largest meal is breakfast. Give me one minute. The largest is going to be breakfast because at 8 o'clock when you get that last snack, you go from 8 to 7, and that's a, almost how many hours? 12. So, had, did your, you give your food a little more time to digest? Mm -hmm. So, your stomach can't empty itself. So, at 7.30, you're hungry. Because normally, typically, do we get a patient opportunity to get hungry? Mm -hmm. No. That's, That's how it's supposed to work. Because weight loss is a serious issue. And you don't want older adults losing weight because nutrition is very important, okay? You had a question? Okay. Nutrition is very important. So that's why when we promote snacking, we promote eating, we watch percentages, we hydrate, we hydrate, we hydrate, and we hydrate some more. Okay. Issues with the um, digestive system include diarrhea, bowel incontinence, 
And that's it for that system, okay? Next is the urinary system, which is one of the most important systems in the body. Yep. In the body. What does it do? Helps the body maintain fluid balance and eliminate liquid waste. Maintain fluid balance, eliminate waste. Um, you have right kidney, left kidney, the ureters, the bladder, and also the urethra. Abnormal signs and symptoms. These things you should report. Very dark yellow urine, small amounts of urine, bloody or orange urine, cloudy urine, complaints, burning or stinging. Very strong odor of urine, frequent urination in small amounts. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> how, 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 how could you get um, urine? I mean, I see this chart on the next page. And like the last cup, that's considered blood in the urine. Mm -hmm. Dark urine. Maybe some parts going on in the urine, right? Like what you drink, sodas, and juice. I just don't want sugar. Like they, they, you know, their pee get that dark, right? What's the pee? What you say? What's the pee? The pee is the urine. I eat peas. You eat peas. No, I'm talking about the. Okay, the urine. Okay, there. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> My fault. Uh, so. Know, it's so dark like that. Medicine. Pour, um, a lot of people don't drink water. People, some people never drink water. They say they don't, they don't like it. So they, their urine has a, no choice, but it's, where you been? It's a lot of people that say they don't drink water. Anybody here don't drink water? I drink like this. Uh-uh. No, water. She don't drink water. This is insane. No, if your body has to break it down, they don't. You, water. Water. It'll make your vagina funny. I'll just say that. You better get it together, Tabby. <laughs> so it's going to, so, okay, you just told her it's going to make her vagina do what? Stink. Stink. You said stink. Stink. Mm -hmm. That's a real stink. So she's, she's telling the truth. Because what happens, it's not going to make her vagina smell. It probably already does. What? Yeah, because. I am wondering. Hold I, up. This I, a, mean, I drank it. No, you just said you don't. Don't change your story. Don't change up now. Because this is a health class. Water is important. It's very essential. It's essentially important. 80% or more of your body is water. Water filters your kidney. It makes your skin, skin pretty. makes your hair grow. It increases your ability to have a bowel movement. But what happens when you don't drink water, your urine becomes very acidic. So it's what she said is actually true. Because when we go to the bathroom, we wipe. If your urine is acidic, it has an odor, your urine comes out of, it's, it's in that area. Yeah. So that's what you, you're going to smell like, um, loud urine. I mean, you would essentially have to bathe every time you use the bathroom if you refuse to drink water. And you know you white, but you probably just would But, I mean, it doesn't, so I guess what I've been drinking is... It may be a smell you used to. I'm screaming. No, people adjust. Why are y'all... Have y'all not been living a long yeah, time? When I drink coffee and I, and I pee, I can smell like... Like, like you, you go toilet yourself and you have not... When I toilet myself and I haven't been drinking water, while I'm washing my hands, I'm like, oh, I need more water. Because it's your urine that you smell. Your urine has a... Else does. Right, your urine is very acidic. Yeah. It's It's con highly concentrated and it's odorous when you don't drink water. Mm -hmm. Coffee and um tea is the worst on your bladder. Coffee and tea. Uh, Y'all acting so sharp. Look at this. Look on page 194. Urine comes in different colors. Very dark. It could be yellow, cloudy. You can have sediments in your urine. If you notice this with your residents, you need to report it. I do it know. If your resident is very odorous when you're cleaning them, you need to report it. Urine is not supposed to be concentrated and odorous. These things need to be reported to the charge nurse. What's your question? How, do you, how does blood get into the urine? How does blood get into the urine? Yeah. From the bladder. So the bladder. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just was confused. 
Yeah. That's surgical work. No. People not drinking enough water and their bladder is irritated. Okay. Now you can drink too much water. That's uh uh-uh, uh, you taking these people too far. We ain't even going <laughs> we're not just... no. Mm-mm. So y'all look on page one ninety six. One ninety six. Um so if you have seen a condom before, oh, yeah. you have seen a condom catheter. Yeah. Basically, what a condom catheter is, it's a condom that's a catheter. It's often used in the homes. Um, They're not as common as they used to be years ago, but you will see them more in the home environment. They put condoms on the penises, um, and what it does is collects urine. It's not like a regular catheter. It's, It's a common catheter. And they're changed out more more so. You could just take take them off, clean the penis, dry it, and put the condom catheter back on. Don't make this more than it has to be. Y'all have a habit of making things bigger. If you've put a condom on before, you know what a condom catheter is. The only difference is um it has this I actually have this because they come in different sizes. And this is a condom catheter. It has something sticky on it. Of course, you know, it has to have something on it to make it stick to make it stick to the penis. Mm-hmm. And that's how the um it stays on. And it the urine comes out that way. And that's a condom catheter. A student um told me one time before she saw a condom catheter on her state test. And she's like, Well, I had no idea what it was and if you felt like you had never ever heard or seen the term condom catheter let me ask you this do you know what a condom is Mm -hmm. do you know what a catheter is Mm -hmm. put it together a lot of things i say to y'all is to get you to critical think like when you take your state test there's no way possible you're gonna go in there knowing everything in this book you have to critical think condom catheter we're gonna put the two together and this is what we get urine comes out of it and it keeps the resident a lot of times you have people with wounds you don't want to get wet this is a simple fix a doctor may write an order for a condom catheter and this will keep the um whatever area from getting soiled okay and that's what a condom catheter is different size questions Nervous system. That's the next system. So the nervous system has three major parts. The brain, the nerves, and the spine. Go right down your back. This is what happens when people have spinal cord injuries and they can no longer move. Um, They have nervous system injury. The brain is located within the skull. The spinal cord contains the nerves that control movement. And yeah, it looks interesting, don't it? Very interesting. Now, when you have a a spinal cord injury or anything, it slows down the nerve impulses. And sometimes you also have a decreased blood flow to certain areas of the brain, which can cause a decrease in short-term memory. And you also, you do have slower responses. Now, abnormal signs and symptoms that you should watch out for are what unsteady walking speech problems tremors involuntary movement reduced sensation people being paralyzed complaints are not remembering things okay one of the common chronic illnesses of the nervous system is ms and that is multiple sclerosis and you also have parkinson's disease mm-hmm. parkinson's disease questions Endocrine system, that system includes what? Hormones to help the body work properly. Yep. Pituitary gland, gland, adrenal gland, parathyroid, pancreas. Now, the function of the endocrine system is the regulation of body energy, the breakdown of sugar, and the ability to have children. Without the endocrine system, we would not be here, okay? 
This system is very important. Now, as you get older, this is what happens. Your glands have a slower rate of releasing hormones, decreased insulin production, and there's a decreased amount of hormones produced by the ovaries, and the male hormone production decreases but does not stop. We don't use white out in nursing. No, we can't. You draw a line through it, right? and put error yeah. in your initial. Now, if that's your personal paper, you can use it. But because of that reason, I just don't have white out because I don't want to set a bad example for my students. Yeah. So, abnormal signs and symptoms. People who have issues with the endocrine system, like diabetics, thirsty a lot. Um, diabetics urinate more also. And they have increased food intake or decrease. And fatigue is a problem. They feel tired all the time, okay? Common illnesses of this system include diabetes, type 1, type 2, gestational diabetes, and also prediabetes. Questions? Now, the sensory system. This is a very easy system. Senses. Your eyes, your ears, your nose, your tongue, and your skin. The sensory system helps give us information from the outside world. Now, what should you report? As patients get older, they have issues with their eyes. Like, um, cataract, yeah. A lot of times you hear they need to let the cataract mature before they can take it off. They have um, vision problems. Hearing problems, also sinus issues, drying of the skin. So that's very common. What's your question? Is your eye flat? No, it's circular. It flattens. It gets flat. Yeah. No, she just really intrigued by this stuff. Yeah, no, yeah it really like flattens. Wait, language. <laughs> what is what are people? Where you came is from? That the reason why people be like, um, I can't see far, far away. No, an older person. You see them do this. Yeah. Like right, that's when bifocals. In your forties, you get bifocals. Hey. If your bifocals are not in the right spot, you're going to have to do this. Because you're supposed to look down in your bifocals to see the small print. But a lot of times we don't want to do that. We rather, because we can see good with our glasses off. This is right here. But I can't see nothing over there. That's what we, that's it. So foresight? No, you won't start listening to what I'm saying. You have foresighted, nearsightedness. Your vision changes as you get older. You need bifocals. 100% change. When you get a certain age, your whole body is going to change. The body is a science. Nursing is a science. And, and you you learning that right now. Because you just mesmerized by this stuff. But I already knew it. Not because I know this. It's like certain, when I say I already knew, I already knew how amazing science is. And you have an aha moment because you just not realizing how amazing science really is. What was your favorite subject in school? It it should have been science because every class she was like, Oh my god, yeah, really? I like, I like science and math. Yeah. I hate math. I hate math too. So male reproductive system. Now let's look at this one. The main structures of the male reproductive system is the penis. You have the testes the scrotum, the prostate gland, and also the seminal vesicle where the semen is produced. Now, the male reproductive system has two functions, reproduction and sexual pleasure. That's it. So do you have to have sex? Yes. No. What's the part? Yeah. Do you have to have sex? No. no. Do you have to reproduce? <laughs> That's not funny because you were just intrigued. So now I'm looking at you sideways. 
You were just intrigued. You just went left with me. Oh my God. Hey, I'm put I'm I like the dumb baby because her next I'm put you out. The next opportunity. So you yeah, I know you guys have seen um people with half bodies, right? Yeah, because yeah, they don't, you don't basically have to have it. But in order to populate America or the world, we have to have this system, okay? Now, as you age, let's, I was, I'm sorry, I jumped too fast. As you age, male hormone production decreases, but it does not stop. Now, the prostate gland, it does enlarge and the testicular tissue mass decreases. And that means the rate of sperm cell production decreases. I actually did a um I had a I can't remember, I think it was October. We celebrate well we don't celebrate, but we increased the awareness on breast cancer in October. I can't remember what month it was. A church called and asked me would I come and talk about prostate cancer. So I was like, sure. And I remember talking about what it was what I was going to talk about in the church. And I remember my mother telling me, well, don't say this and don't say that. And I'm like, well, you know, no, because the church called me. God created the prostate, right? He created the penis. So who are you to tell me I can't talk about what God created? I mean, I, I'm going to be tasteful, but this is for educational purposes. That's the only reason why I'm talking about a penis. So I, I did. I stood in front of that congregation. It talked about a penis, the prostate gland, testicular tissue mass, because it was important for them to know and to bring awareness to the prostate gland and the prostate gland cancer. Did you guys know that if you are African-American, there's a 50% chance that you're going to get prostate cancer? Did you know that? Nope. So did you know if prostate cancer is in your family, there's a 60% chance you're going to get it. No. How many ladies have prostate cancer in your family? Anybody? So if you're African American and you have a history of prostate cancer in your family, what's the percentage? 80. No. So y'all struggling in that math area. Because what did I just say? You, you said, like, like said, you said, you said, that, yeah. I thought you oh, meant like, like the average. I thought you, yeah, I thought you said like average it out. No, I ain't average nothing out. So it's like both percentages added together is your chances of getting prostate cancer. Statistics say if you're African American, there's a fifty percent chance you're going to get it. If you have prostate cancer in your family, there's a sixty percent chance. That has nothing to do with African American, because white people have. White Americans have prostate cancer in their family also, but are they African American? Oh, okay, so by you being black and having it in your family, it doubles your chances of getting it. That was statistics tell you. Okay. That was okay. statistics say. It's, really important that, and, and it's important for people to raise awareness mm -hmm. because I'm sure there are some, um, like, everybody just need to know about, and you, we should make it our. I say, uh, black, well, I don't want to. Know we should that's why you raise awareness. They don't want to go to the doctors to find out because like once they tell you something and you claim it, your body automatically accepts it and that like wears and tell like it's a mental thing. You never heard that? Yeah, I heard people say that, but yeah, it's like a mental thing. Like once I tell you you sick, like if I say you sick and you got this and such, that's already in your mind so, so your body starts to you know like accept the, it. the males Yeah. What's the correct term for a G spot? Is this Female reproductive system. Let's talk about that. <laughs> How we got to a G spot? In, 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 um, oh, okay. I, I know what you're talking about. So what you're doing? It's like that's not. It's a um. I don't know the correct term for it, but I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. And what you want to say about this? Is it? She ain't, she's not going to say nothing about it because oh. we move into the female reproductive system. Mm. So what's the main structure of this system? Provides Structure. The, uh, the, the main organs the fallopian tubes, yeah, the, the vagina, the uterus, and the vulva. Yeah. Now the female reproductive system has two purposes. Reproduction and sexual pleasure. As you get older, 
there was a dramatic decrease <coughs> excuse me in the amount of hormones produced by the ovaries and there's also decreased vaginal lubrication Abnormal signs and symptoms of foul smell and discharge from the vagina, vaginal itching, bleeding, difficulty with sexual intercourse, and open sores. Some common chronic illnesses that develop are vaginal infections and also AIDS. Okay, y'all have any questions about chapter 11? Okay, so I want you guys to go to the end of the book, end of the chapter.